Hello, everyone. Thank Hello. you for joining us today. Thanks, everyone, for joining. But uh, when it comes to corridors and hallways, I think it's one of those spaces that often gets left until the end. And often they are very simply done. I think the, the straightforward way to design lighting in a, in a corridor is down lights in a line down the center. And what we try and always do here is make sure that every single space in the home is, is just as interesting as the next. And these transition spaces, I always feel, do not need to be overlit. They do not certainly, they certainly don't need to just have down lights. I think it's one of the spaces that if you think forward and, and you really plan, you're able to make it such an interesting space without really doing much at all. And certainly, if you have a very long straight and narrow corridor, you want to make it feel as open and as wide as possible, but you also want to make it feel interesting. Um, you're traveling from a beautiful dining room to a beautiful kitchen. You still want to make sure that you have that interest. And one of the very, very simple things that you can do is to consider uh, a point of interest at the end of the corridor. Now, this could just be um, a simple canvas. It could be a window at the end, but the way that you make the lighting sort of guide your eye and, and, and direct your interest is certainly, it's, it's very, very important. And what you can see with these images here is that we've highlighted objects at the end so that you are continuously looking forward and, and moving your gaze to where you want it to be aimed. And by adding in the, the low level floor washers that you can see, it really creates this gorgeous path. And it's such a simple way to create a bit of interest in a space. And uh, I think, one of the key things that we all have to sort of always look at with lights and corridors is that they should not be bright. They do not need to be really brightly lit spaces because you're never going to sit and read a book on the floor. You are always going to sit somewhere else to read your book. Um, so this transition space can really change um, sort of your, your impression uh, when you're moving from the dining room to the kitchen, for example, if there is that difference in, in light level itself. Um, so if you are moving from one brightly lit room to another, the transition space can really help impact that if you tone it down a bit and you have a really beautiful atmosphere in between. So I like that one these on the left-hand side there, Bex, with the, the concertina yes. effect, <clears throat> yeah, which is it's really quite good difficult fun. to plan. <laughs> very difficult to plan um, and it's very irritating if there's lots of doorways in these long corridors but I always think it's quite good fun to sort of try and plan it in a way that you can either it's equal to one another or it's equally opposite <laughs> so mm. that you get that beautiful concertina effect that you mentioned and it's just putting in at the early stages that mm. frame sort of that, that early planning on where everything can be positioned to get that effect now there isn't a rule of thumb on the distance between them. It's purely how you want it to feel. I mean, obviously the more you put in, the greater the impact the floor washer is going to make. But still, we've got the one in the center that has very minimal floor washers and it's still creating a beautiful um, soft light onto the floor. It's quite interesting but to I think, think that you can look at um, the picture on the right hand side there, Bex, and think, oh, I'd, you know, I'd love to have that in my house or I, I, that's yeah. what I want to do on a, a client's project, but it goes to show that really you've got to work around um, you know, the the parameters of the the project that you're dealing with. Because, like you say, there could yeah. be doors in the way. Um, yeah. The image in the middle it wouldn't be suitable for that setup. Um, so you've got to be creative within the space that you know you've got. And you've yeah, got certainly, certainly. And I think also, I mean, when it comes to floor washers as well, in particular, saying about the space of how they are apart. The height is certainly very, very important as well. Um, too often you might see the height of the, the floor washer to be, you know, sometimes up to a meter up the wall. You're not going to light the floor properly if it's not close to the floor. So you have to, uh, to make sure that the position of that is crucial. We always do little tests and, you know, obviously that's dictated by, in some instances, the skirting height itself. Um, but having a little play to see where the light is going to fall and how you want it to fall is, is certainly something to start looking at early on. But then just consider also removing down lights altogether. Um, these fabulous corridors um, 
have one thing in common and that is using up lights within the door frames and the use of either decorative lighting or indirect lighting within the architraves. And by doing that, you're getting a really beautifully soft light. And again, it comes back to talking about how corridors do not need to be bright. They are these beautiful little spaces that you can capture different moments if it is entirely different to the room that you're going into. And if it is beautifully lit, you have like this gorgeous corridor on the left hand side that just has this beautiful atmosphere that can't be created if you again just had down lights. So again, having this indirect lighting is very, very subtly done and it just transforms the whole look and feel of the space. Quick question um, but it's also, that, if you don't mind, yeah, yeah, <laughs> we haven't had any questions yet, but I've got one here for you, which might be interesting to everybody else. If you, um, you know, I, I think those pictures look do look lovely, um, and very dramatic and moody and atmospheric, but that mm -hmm. space on the left hand side, it, you know, you could be considered quite dark. Um, you know, if we wanted to do cleaning in that space, you know, what would the solution be? You know, how are you gonna make that space adaptable for a client? So one thing that should be noted is the, the image on the left is certainly dimmed down. It is, it is, I would say, the up light's probably on around 15%. Your decorative lighting is again on around 15 to 20% as with your wall lights. Um, so that's one thing to consider that the image that this is taken in is in extremely low lit circumstances. You are able to also, obviously, adding these up with these different layers, you suddenly get this much brighter scene. Um, if you did want to add in a layer of down lights or cove lighting, um, more from a maintenance or from that, that sort of brightness point of view, then by all means. But I think if you can try and do it using indirect lighting rather than just straightforward down lights, it, it really helps to this sort of add to the scheme without attracting the fact that you've put down lights in purely for additional light. So it's always, there's always some way that you can approach another layer of light and down lights, down lights are always the last thing I put on when it comes to mm -hmm. lighting design. It's, it's literally the last thing I draw on. on, on well, there's on no the pictures on the walls there that you would want to highlight or anything like that. So it's literally, you'd be lighting the floor and that's it. Yeah. Which is nice lit with and an indirect light it, anyway. Yes, exactly. It's much softer rather than having a bit of a harsher pool of light that you can actually see on the right hand image. Oh. Um, and this, this image here, all three of them, is a very good use of talking about how you don't need down lights to have a brighter atmosphere. Um, all of these are using indirect light sources or the floor washers. So you've got your lighting in the, in the joinery on the left hand side, which is washing up onto the ceiling to create that height. But then you've got your floor washers um, on the floor, well, lighting the floor, um, which again lights the floor. So it's again creating that, that sense of height because it's, it's giving you two different surfaces to look at. So it's a really simple way of getting a lot of light back into the space, but removing the glare and the simplicity of the down lights. Mm. So here's another one, um, which is using, again, um, not using down lights. Um, this is using a linear um, wall washer and using the textured, um, the beautiful texture that we've got, this is, um, supplied here from DKT Artworks. Um, the lighting onto this was just stunning. And this is playing with light and shadow. And the shadow really adds to it. And I think if this was flat, you know, if it's lit during the day, it's totally different. But if you're lighting it with anything else, you, you miss that gorgeous texture that you're getting from the way that it's, it's being uplit. Um, and it's certainly something that if you were to have this all along a corridor wall, you would be, you just want to sort of reach out and touch it. It's a totally mm. different experience. And it's adding in another sense of um, enjoyment in the space. And it really just comes to life. Um, and it's yeah, it keeps a piece of artwork about... on the wall as well, isn't it? It is, it so is. And you would want to like that. Yeah, and during the day, it's a totally different feel. Um, it's still gorgeous and you still want to look at it, but by having that, that effect of light so closely placed and then having the shadow mm -hmm. above, it just, it adds a whole new depth to the space. Mm 